Mr. Speaker, might I just say it was never my intention to have spoken um, on on this bill. I mean, one would expect that it was straightforward. It was meant to have dealt with the COVID ramifications, mm -hmm. and one would have dealt. One would have thought that persons would be wise enough not to open the door. But again, you see, Mr. Speaker. When one wants to enter the realms of political relevance <laughs> and he or she seeks embrace by his own political party, he must show that he's metaphorically the pit bull of the day. And he speaks of COVID mismanagement. I could not believe, Mr. Speaker, that this was the leader of the opposition there. I could not believe it have the audacity to talk about mismanagement, speaks of COVID, the very man who took $7.3 million of taxpayers' money to give to his brother-in-law, gave to his brother-in-law. The people of this country are yet to fully recover. The $7.3 million has the audacity to talk about mismanagement. And then he speaks of crime. And he has nothing. He never made a statement apart from one time when they killed a restaurant owner, a reputed one. You know? Well, I don't even know his shade. I don't even know how much melanin was in his skin. But that was the only time. Mr. Speaker, COVID did not hit St. Lucia alone. So whilst he hides behind the mask of COVID, COVID was a global pandemic. It did not reside in St. Lucia. Yet, he took our economy from the best in the OECS and delivered it to Philip Pierre at the worst. At the worst. Contraction was almost everywhere. But we recorded the most contraction in the, in the Caribbean and Fifth was in the world. That is the man's record. That is his record, Mr. Speaker. So when you hear him talking of, you know, here we are, borrowing 14 million EC to be paid over 80 months, which is seven and a half years, the man wants to complain. But 11 days before the election, Mr. Speaker, he sought to enter into an agreement with Fresh Start for 70 million to be paid in one year at a daily interest rate of 1%. Daily. You know, daily interest rate. Once you get a bill for 228 million, every day you don't pay 280 something thousand dollars. You know, I don't even want to talk about that I'm all here. I don't even want to talk about it, Mr. Speaker. It's a sore point for me. It's a very sore point. We own the mall. The man sold it for thirteen and a half million dollars. Turn around and rent it at a million a month. Are you hearing me, Mr. Speaker? You know, thirteen and a half, and I'm not blaming the beneficiaries. I'm blaming persons like him without an iota of, 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 of membrane where his, his brain capacity ought to occupy in there. Because, Mr. Speaker, who, who does that? You own a facility. We had already expended over $50 million on the facility. You turn around, sold it for 13 and a half. And hear this, Mr. Speaker. He sold it outright for 13 and a half million in the agreement. We had to give the man back 12 out of it to retrofit for us. So we are left with one and a half million dollars and then to pay almost a million dollars in rent for 16 and a half years. You know, who does that? And you today want to talk about management? Mr. Speaker, honestly, I have a list and when he saw I went for it, he knew. You know, I have about 20 misdeeds, the Lockerbies, the T.O.A. King, you know, all of those things, he stayed in a hotel at 2,000 pounds a night. 2,000 pounds a night. He cares about us.
He cares about us. The, 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 the vehicle he drove, which the Prime Minister inherited, I don't know why he did that. But again, being as humble as Philip Jibia is, he would always do. Mr. Speaker, only now this vehicle goes off. When he leaves his home in the morning, until he gets back in the night, the vehicle runs all day. You know, even if he's not in there, he says he never knows at what, at what time he will leave, so it has to be cool. You know? And you talk about, you care about people. You know, Mr. Speaker, some of those things, when you hear those things coming from, you know, the range developers, 32 million, Lockerbie, 32 million, Permandu, 13 million. You know, Sanders collected money on our behalf. It wasn't money they owed us and you give them a reprieve. They merely were the repository of our money. You turn around and ask them to keep it, you know. And we are there suffering. We are suffering our health care, Mr. Speaker. This government will have to do something. We need to raise revenue, Mr. Minister of Finance. We need to raise revenue. You cut the VAT rate by 2.5%, depriving this government of about $270 million over five years. And in addition to that, you squander everything that we had. And today you have the audacity to open your mouth and talk about mismanagement. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> let, me, let me stop here. I'm waiting for the real um, quem de la quem, the debates on the accession to the CCG. I thank you.